Hi, I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is Webinars with Wendy. I've been doing a series of webinars during the pandemic to uh, entertain myself, visit with friends, and uh, learn something. And so it's been really, really fascinating and uh, just, just a blast. So um, today my guests are Danielle Mulcahy and Annie Parsons, and they are both from Martha's Vineyard, and they do mounted archery. Um, I uh, started going to Misty Meadows about... <laughs> I think it's only like two years ago. It feels like a million years ago. Um, I was asked to come out to do a workshop. Oh, I know it was 2017. It was March 2017 because I went to Equitana afterward. And I, I met the folks from Misty Meadows and have since gone back many times and have formed great friendships. But one of the things that I've really enjoyed is their creativity and bringing really interesting programs to the people on the island. And that's both for people who love horses and people who are not familiar with horses but are interested um, that they can interact with the horses as well. So today, these two are going to introduce us to mounted archery. And um, first, I want you guys to give us a little bit of like, 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 how did you get where you are today? In mounted archery. Well, in general, because you have an accent. <laughs> a weird accent. You're I'm, so excited. I'm from Milwaukee originally, <laughs> and you can tell by the accent. <laughs> And I married a lovely American boy, and so I'm here on Martha's Vineyard, and um, I work at Misty Meadows, and I do teaching there and all sorts, and my husband got me into archery like four or five years ago, I think, and he wanted to do it. It was his idea, and I didn't want to do it because I was busy doing hunting and all other stuff, and he forced me to do it, and so I did it. And so it wasn't your idea to do this, to do no, mounted archery? No, it was my husband's. And how did you, how did you um, pick up your first bow? I mean, was it like a workshop or? So he wanted to go, he wanted to do it. And so we ended up going to a local um, archery shop, like a traditional hunting archery place and bought um, my first ever bow, which wow. is a horse bow. This is a recurve. I'm going to um, make you guys bigger so we can really see that. There we go. Yeah, so this is my original. This is a kid's recurve bow. It's a 20 pound recurve bow. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and so I ended up buying this and I had absolutely no clue whatsoever about what I was doing. And so I just had to sort of wing it for ages and ages. Um, and I wung it for ages and ages and I really wanted somebody else to do it with me. I was not doing it by myself. And so I ended up asking Misty Meadows, Sarah McKay, the boss, if I could um, develop a program that we could teach other people to do a mounted archery. Basically, the only way I could ever get any friends is because I is by teaching them myself to be my friends. It's true. <laughs> And um, <laughs> so, so there was nobody there doing archery at all on the island, and you were basically self-taught for how yeah. long? Um, about two years, and I was absolutely rubbish, but it didn't matter. I was having a blast. I had no idea what the courses were. I had no idea. I was just using my recurve bow and some cheap arrows, and I was just galloping about, shooting stuff, and having a blast. Okay, and, and and then, but but I know that you've had someone come to the island and do workshops. We've done well. I ended up going. Um, off island to do a bunch of clinics for myself when I realized I actually wanted to do this properly um, and so I did some clinics with a woman called Marcy Bear up in Vermont who's fabulous and really good teacher and actually I know her from a million years ago yeah <laughs> and, ponies and driving and a bunch of other, oh and fjords I think as well yeah. yep and Tellington Jones yes Linda Tellington yes. Jones yes and um, so she was a brilliant teacher and then I got her to come to Misty we started off the programming and it was an instant success. Even though I didn't really know what I was doing, it was brilliant. Everybody had a great time. And so then we asked Marcy to come to the vineyard and, and teach us, all of us, including me, the teacher. Um, and she came two or three times and really helped, you know, move us forward. Um, and then we've had a woman called Ashley Saffer, who was at the time was number three in the country for the horse archery. Um, and probably will be again at the moment she's off doing paramedic school and being very busy so she's not doing much archery at the moment so she came and she's a top top archer and she was brilliant she did a lot of work with us um, so we've all been even though I'm the teacher we've all been learning together 
Well, that's awesome. And so, Danielle, how did you get involved with all of this? Um, I have, uh, I grew up in Central Mass, and I moved to the island about, like, four or five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. And um, I had been doing uh, archery and horseback riding separately uh, on and off since I was a kid. When I was a kid, I wanted to be Legolas from Lord of the Rings. Which but, is uh, why <laughs> I hang on. I have to have to the spotlight <laughs> and show. This is my <laughs> Hobbiton background for Danielle. <laughs> She's a little Hobbit. It's true. It's true. Um, so, anyways, um, I was just visiting Misty on work, and I saw Annie practicing in the ring with Bucky, and I was like, "Everybody, stop! What is that lady doing?" And she, I was like, "Do you teach?" And she's like, "Actually." I'm starting, you know, classes, and I was like, take my money, and, <laughs> and then, and, and, now we're and, busy. Then, and then she made the mistake of saying, come over to my barn, and then I never left. Yeah, she's still there. I live there. She has an Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I have a stall. <laughs> Well, at Martha's Vineyard, some of the houses are the size of a stall for those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> and the one thing about her, when she first started, she'd actually messed her back up doing downhill mountain biking. Oh, yes. Mountain biking. Mountain <laughs> biking. And uh, so she'd messed her back up really badly. So she actually, at that point, couldn't ride. I had to get surgery. Or even really move. I had to get surgery. So she did the whole winter of practice on the ground. She ran funny, but she still ran. And then she got surgery, and um, within two weeks of surgery, she was back running funny and archerying again. Yeah. So. Well, I have to explain your t-shirts. Oh, these. <laughs> <laughs> so our, um, well, I guess like, ooh. well, well we're, our club is called Amity Island Horse Archers. And Why Amity Island? I thought it was Martha's Vineyard. Well, it is Martha's Vineyard, but the movie Jaws was filmed here. An American classic. An American classic. Uh, was Gosh. filmed here, and it was called Amity Island. So it's a fictional yeah. island. Right, right. We went through a million different names, and they never, none of them really worked. And then we, we all thought Amity worked the best for all the songs. It's awesome. I, I remember seeing Jaws when it came out, and I, at the time, it was the most... I, I mean, I was a terrifying movie and I punched the person next to me because that's what happens when I go to <laughs> movies that are thrillers or, or scary movies. I don't do yeah. well. I go to, I, you know, even the violence in Lord of the Rings and that was hard for me. Um, but yes, yeah, so I remember Jaws very well. I, sorry, I missed the connection, but awesome, awesome logo. <laughs> I wanted, I, thank you. I, you did the logo because she's a fabulous artist. Thank you. Um, I wanted it to like amplify like our location being unique because we're on an island and um so without it it's just kind of like talks to a bunch of i don't know <laughs> well i mean it's true that you're on an island and so you're you know you don't have things as accessible nobody does right now with the pandemic that's one of the things that's kind of yeah, interesting yeah. um but you know as an island island dweller it's not so easy and to get because i teach i used to teach on vashon island and that you had to take the ferry across if you had brought your horse over and some people did but it was a big deal um yeah. and so i know on martha's vineyard to take a horse on or off island is a big deal and to get people to come it's not an easy thing because it's it's a bit of a trek yeah. um as you so, know. Yes, as I do know. So, okay, so now just give us a little bit of the history of not so much archery in general, but but mounted archery and how mounted archery got. Okay, you're Danielle, that's Danielle. Ready for a slideshow? Because <laughs> awesome. Like a slideshow. Slide okay, okay, awesome. I'll sit back and pet the dog. No, no, no. Okay, and I still can't get on Facebook Live. I get an error message, and I've never had that before. So, I really wanted to put this one up because I think these pictures are so cool. <laughs> they don't have fun out there. I just want my audience to realize you guys never have any. no fun. I, have a, I just, I mean, we we already talked about our our group and everything. How many are in your club? This is our group. What's that? How many are in your club? It's a small club. So um, the main members are me and her, and then we have Omar and Sheila Rayan, who are unbelievably good artists. And so check their work out. And then Billy O'Callaghan, who's in the picture on Bucky. Um, oh, okay. 
and he is a potter. He's the mad potter, and he's fabulous. And You're then right. we have Susie Buck, who Weird is, um, as you know, a teacher at Misty Meadows. Yep. And then a few others. There's not very many of us. Yeah. I won't go through all the names because you don't know who they are, but uh, there's only a few of us. So but how many total roughly in your club at any one Probably about, in total with the ground archers, probably 16 people. Okay. And ground yeah. archers will explain in a minute, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's they don't hard ride to, the horses. It's hard to, yeah. They're, they're not allowed on the ponies. <laughs> not, not yet. <laughs> So, it looks okay. like you're already doing demonstrations, like, because this looks like you're having a, uh, you know, at some kind of a fair. We've done a bunch of demos now. So last year, this year was going to be just chocker with demos and competitions. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> and I was going to be teaching like two clinics, well, both of us together, we we're going to be like two clinics a month, but we didn't do any of that. But last year we did some demos. We did like three or four demos. It was the first year of doing it. And it was more fun than you could possibly shake a stick at. It was great. <laughs> we got to dress up and yell and gallop about and we took Tony to some of them. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. we had the best time. And um, this slide right here is just uh, where our chapter, Amity Island, is associated with. And there's the Mounted Archers. So if you were, if you were, yes. 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 So if you were thinking, you're gonna have to do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you are watching this and looking to start out it's the best thing to do is try to find a group nearby yeah um, so if you contact the mounted archery association of the americas also called ma3 or horse archery usa they um are both brilliant organizations and there's many many clubs around the country many teachers there's lots of people doing clinics lots of resources yeah for information yes um so now we're going to do the history of a very brief <laughs> very brief history of the horse archery let me get my notes because um so um this i have to admit was really intimidating for me to to even just take on into like two slides uh because the history is so vast and the modern sport is grabbing all of these amazing um, characteristics from history so it's good to know just like a little bit uh geographically where things i'm gonna like narrow it in it was happening all over the place for sure but i'm gonna like narrow in i'm just gonna say how it starts and then and, and like kind of brush through that and then we're gonna fly on through <laughs> so i hope this doesn't glaze me oh god the map just people <laughs> Don't glaze over. I just, want, I just want to remind people what it's like on the other side of the world, <laughs> like what it looks like, because the people we want to think about are the Egyptians, the Hittites, the Syrians, and India. Um, Egyptians are were in Africa, Turkey, where the Hittites were hanging out, and the Assyrians were hanging out, like um, Iran, uh, back, the yeah, Syria, yeah, all over that, that <laughs> area over there, and then <laughs> India was just doing their own thing, and these guys were just like killing it with um with the chariot the chariot warfare situation i'm so sorry if any historians are watching this right now because i'm about to butcher it so what i'm doing is i'm doing it as a live feed on facebook with my phone looking at my laptop okay you're just, you don't quit i love you. <laughs> i don't it's like i want this up on facebook because it's so you know the archery has been around for how long Lo longer much longer than horse archery and like, I mean, it's, it goes way back, like thousands of years into like Hindu texts. I, I would say like, um, she's making this up now. No, I'm definitely making this up. But I'm like, <laughs> a long time. It's been around a long time. Like, yeah, I know. A long time. I'm like pausing before I say something really dumb. <laughs> okay, but, no, <laughs> let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going. So, um, so in war hit fair, everybody was using um, chariots. And the common thing was that there's some, somebody um, controlling the horse and somebody um shooting the arrows this is when composite bows short bows started happening because um they were oh, unshare your screen so we can see that okay so they were <laughs> just at the top unshare <laughs> there you go and i'm gonna just i'm gonna okay. toggle over here and make you bigger you there we go more. oh no no that way so so <laughs> this way with a shorter bow I'm driving. Wait, are you making, is our, is our thing big? I'm not Yeah, no, we're big. good. You're good. We good? Okay, good. You're good. <laughs> so, um, I'm driving the car. With the shorter, with the shorter, um, 
bows. There was much more room. <laughs> I can see my bingo wing, sorry. <laughs> there was much more room to, to you know, kill people. <laughs> right. So the big bow would have like whacked your driver in the head. Exactly. So you needed exactly. a short bow to right. be nimble. And yeah. and then um at some point the Assyrians were like, what if we just like put you on the horse? And they're like, yes, and they're like, and I'll lead your horse with another horse. So they're like, okay. So there oh there was a short period of time where there was some guy on a horse taking the reins of the other guy on the ho other horse and um and then while he shot. But then eventually they were like, why don't we just train the horses to to, do it. to yeah. do it? So as a result, stronger horses, stronger horsemanship had to happen. And um and I just want to show all these really beautiful pictures of um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just hit oh, play. Oh, just before I go into to yeah, that, do that one. <laughs> wait, well, wait, I'm about to show you a very scary map, <laughs> or no, a chart. It's a, okay, it's right a, now it's a black screen. Yeah. I know. I'm preparing the audience. Okay. Uh, so this is from this amazing book, which we will refer the to. The Bible. This uh, is many the Bible times. of horse archery. And at this first glance, this map is very like. I just keep saying map, chart. This chart is really intimidating, but it is actually really clear and cohesive to show the rise and fall of different civilizations as they were picking up this art form, this art of war, this martial art. Um, and you can see all the ones that we are really familiar with, the Mongols, the Turks, uh, the Scythians, all the Parthians, like, and, um, and of I, what I love about this is, is India just like, like just, conquering the ancient world <laughs> like they were shooting yeah. off elephants these guys were you know so um and i just like love looking at all of these beautiful renderings of this art form that was happening um at the same time in its own different ways and own different pockets of the world so um i think that's pretty much all i wanted to say about that oh yeah and um yep that's it <laughs> And she's done. <laughs> but it, but it's so interesting. This is such an old art, uh, the, you know, yeah. yes. archer. And, and, and they obviously, like the middle picture there, they turned it into games to practice, just like most of the time. What we yeah. do. Yes, Let's exactly, exactly. Um, and so should we get into talking about the actual how to get started in horse archery? Yeah. 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 So, okay, so you guys, just to recap, archery has been around for thousands and thousands of years yeah. and it ruled it's how we ruled yeah. like conquering countries and yeah. and that sort of thing and then when did it fade like when did we start to lose archery when we got guns i suppose when it became guns and what have you yeah i don't know yeah like the last i mean the, so the native americans were using when they once they got horses were using our horse um mounted archery to shoot bison and then we wiped out all the bison um and then in the cultures that really carry it on now especially prominently i would have to say are in mongolia yeah and they still have major events and um you know and it wasn't Bhutan just the near east places, yeah it wasn't yeah. just the near east that was doing horse archery like there are still it still exists in like in japan you're right and um and uh in other cultures as like a traditional sport it's now a fun modern sport and it's now trickled into America. Hmm. It's been well, around, it started here about 20 years ago. It got popular again here. Um, there was a guy called, I, I'm going to butcher a lot of names, but there's a guy called Lucas Novotny, Novotny, Novotny. Yeah. And, um, oh, sorry. And um, he's in Florida and he um, makes, hand makes bows. He's a boa, 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 um, Saluki bows. So you can actually get really hey. nice handmade bows from him. And he's also the guy who taught Marcy, who taught us. And um, so he was one of the originals who brought it to America. There's a few other people as well. But it's so about 20 years ago it started and it's just been getting more and more popular. Yeah. Especially recently. Recently, I've noticed, even since I started, I haven't been doing it for that long. Yeah, in the last like five years, place. it's gotten yeah. very popular. Yep. Uh -huh. Okay, so be, because I'm holding my phone at my computer screen in order to do Facebook Live, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tell everybody on Facebook, you can see this and all the other webinars by subscribing to the Surefoot Equine YouTube channel and you'll be able to see the rest of this video where they teach you how to do mounted archery or how to get started in mounted archery 
on the Surefoot Equine YouTube channel, and we will post a link to this video later on after it's done. So sure. thanks for tuning in on Facebook. I'm tired of holding my phone. So <laughs> see, see you later. Bye. I love watching Brilliant. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Look at go. Okay. All right. So it's time to get started on how to do this. Okay. So slideshow, slideshow, slideshow. Slideshow, 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 slideshow. So when you first get <laughs> wait, wait, going, wait, 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 hold your horses. Literally. No, figuratively. Okay. Where to start? Where to start? Without the horse. Mm, because, you know, being on a horse, it can be hard enough. There's a lot to learn. And then you add a weapon. You should probably just like take it one step at a time. Take it slow. Take your time. Yeah. It's dangerous, but fun. So there's an organization called Horse, uh, called Archery USA. There's also Horse Archery. So Archery USA does the Olympic style ground archery. And that's where I first went when I wanted to start teaching other people. So I went and did um, my level one and level two in Archery USA um, instructor license certification. Um, and so we're going to show in a minute of slides or video of us doing the shot sequence for ground archery. Once you get onto the horse archery, you, it, it's different. But when I teach, I teach everybody on the ground first and I teach them the shot sequence because um, it gives them um, a chance to learn the form of archery. Mm -hmm. So archery itself is a martial art and it's all about the form. It's not about the target and it's not about what you can hit. It's about getting consistent form, which will then shoot the arrow into the same place every single time. So form is the most important part of this. So, um, and to, if anybody's watching from like USA Archery, and I'm sorry if this is bastardizing your wonderful sequence, but... <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> um, so before we start with that, yeah, we should just go through equipment. You... Oh yes, please. Yeah, okay. yeah. So We've got loads. Okay, so we need to unshare the screen, or wait, wait, wait. Oh, you've got wait, pictures. Let's show you the list, and then we're gonna do share time. Yeah. Okay. Got this sorted, mate. I mean, this list. <laughs> <laughs> she has this sorted. Um, first, you're gonna need a traditional bow, arrows with feather fetching, fletching, feather fletching, oh, sorry, fetching, <laughs> <laughs> Pro protection tape an arm guard and a quiver and a target. So, so just out of curiosity, what would it cost for someone to just get that equipment to get started? Probably. If you wanted to go just to, you could go on to Amazon. If you want to go cheap, 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 you can go on to Amazon and you can buy this bow, which is called a snake bow. And it's um, 35 bucks and it's, it's plastic. It's just a cheap bow. It shoots okay for the price. Um, and it just, it works. So you can buy cheap arrows, cheap bow for 35 bucks. If you want to um, get into some nicer equipment, well, well, yeah, this really is um, a fiberglass horse bow. This is the fiberglass Nomad horse bow. And you can buy this from the Nomad Northwest Warriors, no, the Northwest Nomad Warriors. Um, Canyon Coppola or Coppola um, <laughs> and Canyon is actually one of the guys who helped me so much more he's than anybody else helpful, yeah. he's he'll answer any dumb questions you have he has fabulous equipment so this bow is a brilliant bow it shoots beautifully and it's a hundred bucks so but the bottom line is you can get into this for like with the 30 dollar bow and a target you can get into this for less than a hundred bucks so okay you could that's buy, what i'm trying to figure out yes you okay. can buy target for 35 bucks you can buy the snake bow for 35 bucks and then some arrows for 30 40 bucks Great. And off you go. So it's not like you have a huge outlay to get started. Right. No. But we will point out the things that you should, you can't just buy any bow. So, okay. like, so for example, like um, the bows in horse archery, they all are different. There are different kinds, but the thing that they all have in common is that there's no scopes. There's no uh, bells and whistles. There's no ledge for the arrow to sit on. This is traditional at its fine it's, it's simple it's simple. I, what i love about it the most um and it's a, very intuitive so that's what you're looking for when um this is also from canyon coppola or coppola uh, sorry canyon um 
<laughs> Maybe when we post the video, you can put some links to that. Yes, the she comments. has it all at the end. So. Oh, great, awesome. And this is a laminate nomad horse bow. This was designed by Canyon, and it's a three hundred dollar bow, and um, it's an amazingly good bow. It's very it's inexpensive for what really it is, beautiful. and it shoots so nicely. So we both have one. I bought one and then everybody tried it and then everybody else in the club bought one. So we all have one now. <laughs> so it's easy to up, upgrade. Uh, it sounds like it's really easy to upgrade and you could spend a lot of money. Oh yeah, you can get a handmade bow from Saluki Bow, which is gonna cost you like in between, I don't actually know, 600 to $1,200. But one should be sure that they really wanna do this before. Exactly, they yes. So okay, good. Honest, I started off, I went and just bought the $100 one the and then the fiberglass one because I was, um, and I was like, why not? I think I like this. And then I was like, oh, I really like this. And then I made the yeah. plunge. Right. And we have the arrows. So this arrow is a cheap, cheap arrow. I got these from Walmart and they are, I think like 35 bucks for six of them. And they're not great, but they work. So I use these in class with the fiberglass bows. Um, and then the nice arrows are from Canyon again. <laughs> and this is a really out. <laughs> Be careful with your weapons. So this is a four fletch arrow and the knocking you can see the knock is different so the traditional cheapy bow has a really narrow knock and this one has at least some different ones this is a coach knock and these help it slide onto the string the speed with knocks, yeah. Yeah, speed knock so when you're galloping along trying to get this on the string is more difficult than trying to get this on the string right this is the slide right yeah because you can't look at what you're doing right um, and another thing to note usually um do you want to bring the cheapy one? Usually in archery, there is um, three feathers with the, and um, for those who know how to shoot, um, they note to not. That's the cock, the, that's the hens. And so what they have is the cock goes away from the bow so that when it goes past the bow, the cock feather doesn't get in the oh. uh, But in horse archery, we really don't have time to look at this while we're galloping on a horse. So that's, there's four, so it doesn't really matter. Got it where you're going across yeah. it. Um, and uh, these, Ashley Saffa made these for me. Yep, yeah, these are how um, And then once you, there's a, there, I could, we could probably do a webinar on just arrows. But we're not going to. Did, okay, yeah, this is just an intro to yeah, archery. Yeah, exactly, no, yeah. no, but that's what I'm saying. So when you go to look up what you want, you'll be like, Ugh! like there's so much to it. But the most important thing is um, the feathers. And there's arrows with plastic, and those will- The veins. Yeah, horrible. the plastic veins, and they'll cut you. <laughs> they'll, they'll cut you. They'll cut you. Yeah. Wow. So um, feathers, are, feathers are preferred. Yeah. Um, what was the next one? Um, protection. Now that we're talking about protection, we're sporting. Some. Protection. So this is an arm guard. So when you shoot, the string sometimes will slap your arm, and um, this protects your arm from getting bruised. Um, and then this is actually when you're holding the bow, the arrow passes across this leather so that you don't get any bits of arrow fletching or, <laughs> or anything stuck in your hand because it hurts. That really hurts. So Danielle, uh, are you left-handed? Um, I'm, I'm actually right-handed, but I shoot lefty. And I'm right-handed, um, but I shoot lefty. But I shoot lefty and righty now. Okay, so you yeah. can shoot left or right. I'm yeah. ambidextrous, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, I'll shoot, um, two, we'll get into styles of shooting. I'll shoot one style on left and then another style on right, just so it gives my brain a chance to switch the different styles. And then these gloves, I use these. So I don't use any of this stuff. I use these gloves, can't pronounce the name of them, but they're riding gloves. Oh yeah, yeah. Ra you Raquel. 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 I so think these, it's Raquel. <laughs> they're really, really thin and those are my favorite kind of gloves, yeah. Yeah, and they're really, really thin, but they, they, they fit tight to your hand so you can feel. But most of the top archers don't actually wear any protection. But I'm a massage therapist, so I got, uh, it's best if I don't have rough hands. suggest if you're beginning, please wear protection. <laughs> yeah, wear your safety gear when you start and, because it hurts. Yeah, and depending on what kind of style you're shooting, you'll wear uh, which fingers you're using. Um, for example, I use my thumb, so I only tape my thumb. Um, I got this gloves at TJ Maxx for a dollar and there's a hole in it already from shooting. So that's, yeah. get, you know, invest. Uh, but you're protecting yourself, which is important. 
It's yeah. very, yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Uh, I think that's a good yeah. for protection, yeah. yeah. Um, and if you're riding, wear a helmet, even though lots of the videos that we're gonna show you in a minute, I'm not wearing a helmet. You should wear a helmet. Wear a helmet. Yeah. Um, quiver. Quiver is another one where you're like, whoa, so many. But um, in horse archery, some uh, competitions require quivers and they require sometimes even traditional quivers. So um, a quiver basically holds your arrows. Holds your arrows. Exactly. And why okay. is it called a quiver? Because it shakes when you're, no, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't get going with that. <laughs> so this is the quiver. This one was made by Hilary Merrill, and um, it's lovely. So this actually will sit around my waist, and it's it sits nicely, and it's really easy to pull arrows from. We'll actually see pictures of that, won't we? Yeah, we'll see yeah. pictures. This one's from Mihai. We'll see him, and this one is a sword quiver because it comes out kind of like like a sword. <sighs> and then I also have a back quiver, which I forgot to bring which I use when I'm shooting Persian with my right hand. So I shoot Mediterranean with my left, Persian with my right. And so it's very fast, but there's again videos. And this one is from Canyon. This one actually goes behind your back and it sticks out like turkey feathers, but it's actually a very good tiny little quiver. It holds like 20 arrows. And this is a fantastic little quiver. Um, and when you draw it, you draw it from behind you. Wow. Uh, um, but when you're getting into the real fast speed shooting, like this so. isn't as fast. Yeah, because you have to come all the way around. Right. So when you are when you are there at that point in your skills where you start to think about where you the arrows um, want to be placed on your body, it, it depends on your body type too. Yeah. So like her boobs get in the way of most things. <laughs> She's but we really all want to be Legolas and just come off our back. Yeah, and look so, but the but the boobs aside, um, it's. it's it's also, my arms are really short and I'm not as flexible in the shoulder. <laughs> um, so the back quiver doesn't work for me, but I'm really fast from the side. Okay. So would, uh, there's no right or wrong quiver, as long as you're not getting hurt or hurting other people or your horse, whatever works best for you. And you will be fastest, as Ashley Safa would say, of whatever you practice. Yeah. And that's like what I love about horse archery, and I'll keep going back to this, is the flexibility. Yeah, there is nothing wrong. You can't really do something wrong uh, unless you hurt somebody. There's so many different styles. <laughs> right. And different, so. And the styles are all being drawn from, from history or from people just like looking at those pictures and trying to like depict like, like what, they, what they were doing. I love it. So she has a bunch of videos lined up. Okay. About stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop. Yeah, how are we doing on time? We're good. I right? have no idea. We're good. Oh, cool. We're good. Okay, perfect. Um, so next we're gonna talk about um, uh, the shooting basics. Uh, Annie's gonna. So this is the ground archery shooting sequence. You know, okay. what I have to ask you, Wendy, about how sound is from. Sounds our great. Oh, good. Okay, so we're gonna share the screen, and this video has sound, so hopefully it's okay. Do do do. Yay. Um, so we're just going to go, just go list the, the, the shooting sequence. And again, as you said earlier, this is the ground. Yeah, this is a USA archery, Olympic style archery that I start my students with just because it, it, some of them don't ever go on to do horse stuff. They just want to do ground archery and mine is not brilliantly done. So again, I apologize to USA archery, but <laughs> This is my version. Beautiful. That's okay. This is, you know, we're just trying to introduce people to the sport. Yeah. 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 Stance. Knock. Grip. grip hook. Set. Set, set up. <laughs> draw to load. Anchor. Transfer to hold. Aim. Release. release. Follow through. Follow through. So we're going to. Oh, gonna wow. Just, okay. That's the sequence. That's the sequence. Let's watch Annie. All right. Stance. Knock. Like he's not helping. Like he's right enough. <laughs> set, set off, draw to load, anchor, transfer to hold, aim, release, follow through. Can you play that again? So no, she's going to go through feet, it without right, me. It with oh, great. Feet slightly towards the target. This is ground archery, not horse archery. It's a different style, but I always teach ground archery to start and then we change it and move on. 
Did you hear that all right, Wendy? Yeah, Sorry. there's a little bit of wind sound, but it's okay. Knock. And it can go five balls with loads of knock. And then so you're going to uh, grip. Uh, and a nice light grip. You don't want to be death gripping it, otherwise it will move the actual whole bow. Then hook, which is where you bring one finger above, two fingers below, and bring your thumb and little finger together. Is he in the video? No, he's like, but he's making an appearance. Yes. Like, I have it now. Set is where you set your body. So you want to have a nice strong core. You want to have your pelvis tip forward. On the ground out there, you're going to have a straight knee. When you're on the horse, you won't. You'll have a much more flexible loose knee. Right um, also, the wrist is bumped out slightly. And excellent, excellent. Set up the hand straight up. Draw to low. Bring the hand back towards your face using your shoulders and back muscles, not your arm muscles. Anchor, you bring that finger to the corner of your mouth and transfer to hold where you transfer the strength into your back. And then aim at the target, release and follow through. And voila! That's when, I broke the That's when she broke an arrow. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so stance is when you set your feet. Yes. Knock mm -hmm. is when you put the arrow uh, into the string. string. Yeah. So grip is how you hold the bow. Okay. And hook is where you're putting your fingers onto the bow, even though the bow is upside down in this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I do what I'm doing. And set is where you basically, you set your body. So you want to have, um, you know, a firm core, pelvis tipped forward a little bit. Um, and if you're on the horse, you want a nice loose knee. If you're on the ground, they actually have a straight fixed knee. Yep. Um, and um, you want to make sure your head is up and you're not tipping to the side or anything like that. Set up is when you start to bring the bow up. <laughs> and then when draw to load literally just means you're drawing it back. Um, and then you anchor it. And when I first start teaching them, I have them use their finger and pull on the side of their mouth. Oh, seriously? And that teaches them to be, because if your anchor is even this much different, then your arrow is going to be this far different by the time it gets to the target. Okay. So you want your anchor to be exactly the same every time. And there's loads of different anchor points, uh, but that is basically the beginner anchor point is here. When I anchor, I anchor with my thumb underneath my chin. And there's a thing called a floating anchor, which comes to about here, yeah. which is used with the thumb drawer a lot. Um, and there's people anchor up here, they anchor down here, they anchor over there. And it's so it, basically the anchor is some way to stabilize to make sure that your sh aim is true. Yes. Exactly. Well, yeah. So with the beginning, you don't really worry about your aim because everything here has to be consistent before you can start like consistently aiming. Pointing at something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Knowing that you're going to hit that same spot every time because you're doing the same thing yeah. here. So right. with ground archery, they do actually aim. But in horse archery, you don't. You look at the target and your form has been so practiced that you don't have to worry about it. You just look at the center of the like target. Shoot your... Yeah, you shoot from the heart. Um, transferring to hold um, is actually literally put, getting the um, strength of the weight of the arrow into your back muscles. So if you're not just, if you're just using your arm muscles, your arm will fatigue so fast. So your transfer to hold is literally putting that strength into your back. Aim, you look at the target, and release and follow through. So whenever you release, you don't just leave the hand here and snap the fingers, you actually bring the hand back. Um, ah. It actually helps the flight of the arrow. You brush your ear, that's what Annie always says. Brush your ear. So you can either brush your ear, tell yourself how beautiful you are. Oh, I'm so beautiful. And that was Rebecca, who actually came up with that one, of course. Um, and then there's a tiger tail, which is the follow through is this big. Uh, Ta-da! Ta <laughs> but it gives the intention on the line. So that's really important. Yeah. And when I follow through, I just come to my shoulder because it helps me just stay the same every single time. And that's time. with this ty that type of shooting too. With um, the thumb draw, it's more, you actually end here. Yeah, you don't have to follow through with the thumb. You actually twist your hand with yeah. the thumb. So. You kind of just, it's the way you're releasing the tendons in your hand. Wow. The string. Cause you don't like you, you're, you can't, once you release, you cannot fight that string. You've got to let it go. Yeah. Oh man. Archie's let just a fertile bed of beautiful <laughs> metaphors. I love it. So when you are releasing the arrow, 
you actually, it's a lot of people will snap the fingers open and that can mess with the arrow flight. Sure. So what you actually want to do is you want to just relax. Can, can you unshare the screen and show us that? Because I can't see you wrong. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Oh, it's gone. Have a uh, what did I do? No, the you unshared your screen. You have to perfect. Oh, I did it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so show that again with your hand. So um, when you're releasing, you don't want to just snap the fingers open uh, because that will, it's stiff and it will mess up with the, um, mess up the flight of the arrow. So you actually want the string to push your fingers open. And so what you do is you just relax these muscles, your flexor muscles. So these muscles here, you think about relaxing them. And as you relax them, then, then the string will push your fingers out of the way. And I actually teach the release separately from everything else. Sure. One of the first things I teach, and it's separate from everything else, I do it in rubber bands. And, um, and that's a very important part of it is that relaxed release. Yeah, because the, the tendency would be to grip onto it unless you had learned how to relax. Yeah. And the same with the bow. If you grip hard on the bow, you actually will turn the bow. Right. One of the videos that we're about to show, I've actually got a death grip on the bow and it's embarrassing, but never mind. That's okay. That's not great. We wouldn't have noticed if you hadn't said. I know. I noticed it though. <laughs> so I think it's important also as a beginner, because this was really confusing for me as a beginner archer to understand that, that there are different styles of shooting. And um, I would say my advice to anybody starting out is to be open to trying different things. Like once you start getting good at one, one style, you start you really good about yourself. And then it's really hard to then I teach you another one. So it's distinct again. <laughs> and, but you have to be open to be like, well, this could be faster or my, like, you know, my oh, short arms might be better at this. So you have to be open to um, being bad at it again to, to get better. And um, I think that goes to say for a lot of martial arts and working with, with ponies. Yes. It goes yeah. to say with a lot of things. Like, yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And every single like the, um, the Mediterranean and the Tham and the Persian all have different ways of releasing. They all have different ways of knocking. They have quivers that work best with different styles. So there is so many different styles. So it's really important to be open to, you know, keep the change. Yeah. So next we're going to show you um, the styles of shooting. Oh, awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. Is it, am I doing it? I don't know. Yep. You're okay. on. <laughs> Um, oops, this line. Hi, Reg, how are you doing? All right, so the different styles of shooting. The Mediterranean. Reggie, come here. The come Thundra. Come say hi, this is Reggie. <laughs> Annie, we're doing a slide show. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the two finger draw or the Persian draw. You guys are my comedy relief for the week, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get us a TV show. Um, the Slavic draw. The assassin headed <laughs> draw. <laughs> so, um, for the purposes of this um, of this uh, webinar, we're just going to talk about the first three, which are the most common. Because we don't really know much about the last two. <laughs> so, somebody's asking a great question: Is yeah. there an American style, perhaps Native American? Um, the most popular over here with the horse archery seems to be the thumb draw. It's also called the Mongolian, I think, isn't it's, it? it used that, to be. That's like, because that's the most popular with horse archery. Yeah, I would say. That, yeah. that question. What was the American Indian style? I actually don't know. I actually do not. Okay, know. there's your homework. There you go. Yeah. There's something to us for us to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So the Mediterranean is the three finger draw. And um, oh, this is it. So this is Dan Sawyer, the bloke you can see in these pictures. And he was one of the people who wrote the, the wonderful Bible, him and his wife, Claire. Um, and so this is actually stolen from the book with permission. Um, and that's the three fingered Mediterranean draw. And, um, and then we're gonna watch Annie You're go gonna watch it. me do it. Tell us what's going on. There's some stuff going on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have, with this one, I've got the uh, knock above the knock point which stops the, the arrow from moving up and down. Oh, look at that, it's lovely. The arrow lovely. sitting over her knuckle. And this is actually loading arrows into your hand to shoot from your hand. This is just a little um, video to show you how. So if you wanted to go along with arrows in your hand to shoot, which makes it quicker, um, this is how you do it. Look and learn. Um, so, so it's a very open hand, 
just um, flexion in the in the in the last digits of the fingers. Yeah. You have to probably is, get fairly uh, strong at the at make sure your your uh, uh, dip and mip are pretty pretty flexible. Yeah, you have good strong hands, and you'd use like gloves gloves to protect your little digits too. Yeah. Because I can see where that would, it you know, with someone who maybe has some difficulty with their hand, this one might be a little hard. Well, this one is the Mediterranean is the easiest. Oh, okay. Oh, and this is the ground archery is pretty much always Mediterranean, three fingers. Okay. Um, the thumb is the really difficult one because you're pulling the string with your thumb. That's oh. next. Which is okay. next. So, and she's thumb draw. I only do a little bit of thumb draw, not very much. I do mostly Mediterranean or Persian. He does the thumb. I learned I learned Mediterranean, and then I just I and I started doing the thumb, and I picked it up really easy. So I was like, this feels good. I'm just gonna keep doing it. Um, so before the thumb draw is, um, it's a little bit more complicated. As you can see, I, I tape my thumb. You can wear thumb rings, but because I have such baby thumbs, I, it's really hard for me to. I need like a custom ring made, um, especially for high poundage bow. Um, the poundage of the bow is how heavy it is that you're pulling back. Pull um, you'd want a ring because it's a lot in your thumb. I like this. Um, so where does the weight? I'm confused where the ring goes. The ring fits on your thumb. Yeah. Actually, you actually will then have the string yeah. sitting on the ring. Let's watch the video. But okay. You have to have a custom ring. Yeah. So you could see. I'm going to do it again. The the thumb wraps around the string underneath it and it pushes my thumb pushes against my the pad of my middle finger as my other hands drape over it um and the arrow sits over my thumb in the bow hand and oh. then, and so there's a you can see this i'm draping my fingers over and i'm keeping the last fingers loose okay and as i draw back instead of drawing to my mouth i draw a little lower because as you can see i think i back up there we go um it's how my body works. It keeps me nice and straight. That's called a floating anchor. Wow, Danielle. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so I, this is my favorite uh, loading um, method. It's really simple. I just hold the arrows in my, in my hand. And um, there's a variety of ways to get the arrows up to the knock, but this is a slow motion, easy way. And um, Again, we could see this. It's really complicated. Yeah, that that actually, this is the best view you here. You do it with somebody. And I, again, I'm showing this x-ray because a lot of people think that the string is sitting on that joint where the where the thumb bends, but that's a lot of strain on such a, you know, not a very strong point in your hand. So it's, it's important to put that the string is resting on that, that little divot in your thumb. And you no, can like, no, no. Feel, yeah. So that's you your, can, that's actually your short pastern. <laughs> <laughs> right and it's and the, it's got a curve to it so you're really actually putting the string into the curve of the short yeah, pastern to the joint itself right that's because really that's the, and that was what i was thinking you could see how quickly someone if doing this incorrectly could yeah, blow yeah. up their thumb yeah, and if you're in the mediterranean you don't sit it in that joint you sit it here in the second phalanx right yeah right um i like um the thumb draw because of the way it when I put the arrows on, instead of going all the way around to my other knuckle, it sits over, the arrow sits over the thumb. And um, this may be like going over people's head who are just starting, but just like keep it in mind to try, again, try different ways of knocking in different styles because you never know what one is gonna, you know, what you like. Right. Um, and then the next one, the, the last one we'll go over is um, the two finger or Persian draw. Um, we're going to watch Annie, and then we're going to watch um, Mihai. Who's the best man ever. Can I say something? Cos 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 Cosme. Mihai Cosme. Cosme. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, he's incredibly efficient at this. Um, so first, let's watch Annie. I'm, I've actually hyperextended my elbow here, <laughs> and so uh, which is bad because then you end up twanging your... Forearm. Oh, just to, and sorry to interrupt, but like I love this part in the video because we notice if you look in the picture, Annie's thumbs are really short, and I think that's. I was like, wow, look, your thumb isn't. If you look in the picture, the thumb is kind of supposed to be pinching it, but her cute little thumbs, and but she's making it work. But there's no like. Yeah, with the hyperextended elbow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we know that. We know that. That was the embarrassing one. I was like, oh my gosh. It's okay. So it's really like a thumb and forefinger. Uh, pinch to the arrow. So you have the two fingers here. Can, can you unshare your screen for a sec so we yes. can see it? Yep. 
So the two fingers here will be below the knock point Turn right. and they will be the ones pulling the string. And then uh, this finger here will be holding the arrow so it doesn't just drop off the string. And then when you have a normal length of thumb, um, that, <laughs> I'll just pop that on there. So these will be pulling the string. This will be holding the arrow onto the string. And then this one should be sitting here like this, but it doesn't because I have really short thumbs. So I just put my thumb down here out of the way. I don't know if you can see that. Got it, okay. And, and now, it. can you show us the other grips? The yes, so Mediterranean is two fingers below, one finger above. And, oh, really? um, but the big difference be between Mediterranean is Mediterranean shoots off of the knuckle and then thumb and Persian shoot off of the thumb. Oh, wow. So the other side of your hand. Yeah. Of your grip hand. But, so um, the Persian and the thumb are actually faster when you're putting it into your bow and knocking it. It's actually faster because it's right there. Whereas with the Mediterranean, you have to come over. And I actually shoot with my left, so I should be doing this with my left. But. And I think it's important to say that like each thing like whether whatever side you're on you can't shoot the Mediterranean over your thumb and I'll show you why um so here I am oh, the arrows over my thumb and it's Mediterranean and the arrow as I'm galloping on the horse oh falls off. Fall off whereas if I'm doing the thumb draw I'm walking in this if I'm with the Persian it stays here so but if you are shooting Mediterranean it goes uh, this what side. you would actually do is you turn your hand slightly and it does hold the arrow onto the bow and then this side, yeah, you're kind of holding on. Uh, yeah. She's walking on now. Got yeah. it. Okay. Stop. We can go back to the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back to the video now. Oh, yeah, let's go. She's let's like waffling on now. What? Did you say waffling? Waffling, yeah. God, I could go for some waffles right now. Share screen. <laughs> Am I sharing? Okay. Yep. Hit play. You doing good? Pro. All right. So, okay, we have... Um, Two finger Persian, which yeah, we just showed, Annie, and then with my hyperextended elbow. All right, so here goes Mihai. This what? is the fast man. He is the fastest, and he is like the top competitor in the world. Is that he's real an time? Amazing archer. That's real time. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. That was one of his. He was breaking his personal okay. record up there. I just kind of scooped that off. His okay, you got to do it again he's, because it was really funny. Him. It hung up and then it went really, really fast. Faster than it started. Yeah, he's oh, so fast. I, no, 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 no. I actually think that she meant there was some. The uh, video hung up a little bit. Can you do it again? Let's do it again. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear him, Let's but watch. it's not happening. There we go. So even though he moves a lot, it's exactly the same every single time. His form is perfection. And even though there's a lot of movement, it's. It's literally every single time it's exactly the same. Well, so, which, that was really interesting to watch because it did his his rhythm and his body movement is identical with each shot. Now it hung up. So maybe we can put that link in the comments when we post it on Facebook so people can actually watch that video. Yeah, because so ha he, has, he has a Facebook page and he has a YouTube channel and he does lots and lots of videos and he is an amazing teacher and um, I can't tell you how brilliant he is. He's just brilliant and the nicest man. So and where I, does he live? He lives in um, Finland, but I think he's not Finnish. I think he's Hungarian. I actually don't know. I don't, but he, I think he lives in Finland at the moment mm -hmm. with his wife. Um, and his wife makes these beautiful riding skirts. Um, oh, wow. But I mean, I approached him about using his video and he's just super nice and super friendly. And he actually, I'd arranged for him to come and give us a clinic. And he was oh. gonna come, and we ended up with Ashley Safa because he couldn't come and he recommended Ashley uh, because he, he was having trouble getting into the country with all the Trumpy stuff going on. So, um, but yeah, he was gonna come over and just give us. Wow. You know, well, cool. maybe after this pandemic's we'll over. See. He's an amazing guy. We'll so. see more videos of him in a little later. Yeah, okay. Um, so uh, to, wrap up again this 
uh, ground archery. <laughs> I love. It. I don't know who took this photo, but I love it. <laughs> this guy is pulling it back, and the bow is exploding. He has great form. Um, safety, safety, safety. Wear protection. Use proper arrow length. That meaning when you pull it all the way back, the worst thing that could, you could do is have an arrow that's too short. So when you release the arrow, it'll just go through straight your, through your, your wrist, hand. Your hand. Yeah. Oh, that um, would be really bad. It'd be really bad. So mm -hmm. like, just like. You no, know, look into that. If you really long arms, most standard um, uh, lengths of arrows are you'll be fine. But like you have long arms, just you know, be aware. Um, inspect equipment before shooting. Inspect your um, your uh, bows so you, and you and inspect your arrows. So what she's doing here, she's giving it a little bend. She's listening to it. What we're we're using carbon fiber um, arrows, and I can uh, personally attest that carbon fiber splinters are yeah, the painful. worst. They're really so bad painful. yeah because and it's basically yeah, needles exactly and you can hear the splinter so just like listen and be aware of that and um again when you're starting out you're gonna lose a lot of arrows and you're gonna break a lot of arrows so don't you know you don't have to buy it it's gonna hurt but those expensive ones will eventually break and and you know yeah i just got brand new ones she broke it <laughs> you know <laughs> it does have never dry fire never dry fire this is so important fire. when you have your bow uh, and you've pulled it, you never release the string if there's not an arrow in there. Oh, wait, because... unshare your screen and explain this because right. I'm thinking fire, you know, dry tinder, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so dry firing is when you release the string when there's no arrow in it. And so there is a lot of um, power when you release that string. And um, when you release with an arrow in it, that power is used to propel the arrow. If there is no arrow, the actual shot can go through the bow and shatter the bow, which you saw in that previous picture. Wow. That shattered bow was somebody dry firing. And so- Even I've, though there was an arrow there? Well, I've dry fired twice now. And what's happened when you're speed knocking, you think you've got it in the knock, <sighs> and you haven't, and you draw and release and you dry fire. And then the arrow's just sitting there hovering in yeah. the- Oh, that's oh. right. Yeah, why would the arrow be still there? That's right, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, An amazing uh, photograph then. It is, right? Yeah, I photograph. know. So when I, the first time I dry fired it, I actually opened up, it hit my arm and it just opened up my arm. It was horrible. And um, it was just the worst. I mean, it wasn't. You know, right. It, it was horrible anyway. So never, ever, ever, ever dry fire. No dry firing i tell all my so students, so if fire, you've drawn your bow then do you can you slowly release the string take the string back so if you if you oh, draw, sorry and um so i'm gonna go draw. yeah what if you draw so and you realize you've draw. missed your notch or knock or something yeah so i have to just release it slowly without so you hold the string all the way till it's no longer under tension yeah got it yeah Safety. Okay, sure. But you know, it's so true of everything, and there's always the you know there's this exciting part, and then there's the cautionary part. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Especially with weapons. And once you've knocked your arrow, you never point it at anybody. I'm getting them. Oh, sorry, she's getting my them. list, Danny. <laughs> she has a list. Um, know and obey the safety rules and instructions of the range safety officer, range director officer, <laughs> <laughs> range safety officer, and the range or the range master, whatever you call them. Wherever you're shooting and practicing archery um, with a group, uh, just to know the rules. Um, everybody has different vocabularies about whether the range is hot or cold. Whether the cease, they don't usually say fire; they say shoot, release, release. Um, know those rules and and like don't be a jerk you know um <laughs> so uh, yeah <laughs> uh and uh, don't point a knocked arrow at people or anything you were holding a loaded weapon you yeah. spelled weapon wrong i did oh yeah she, did. <laughs> she, used, to nice she used to sex it so be kind to her be kind her talents lie elsewhere just My not in spelling lie elsewhere so <laughs> now it's time annie Boris, let's watch Annie. Are those all of your arrows? Yep. So you have three different styles of quivers there. Yeah. So I've got canyons on the back. <laughs> I've got me high and me high. I've got two different me high quivers. And then and once you've, you've got, got all Bucky. the arrows, 
you can't get on your horse so you have to have the horse come to you yeah <laughs> right annie take it away la la larry, la, la, larry. <laughs> do you remember larry <laughs> so yeah you, you gave her a lesson with larry yeah so, i remember larry yeah so larry has a lot of fear stuff but we've actually taught him to be a good archery horse so we spent a lot of time desensitizing him to the arrows to the bow to the noise of everything um and she has a little slideshow now of how sort well, of what you do with your montage. horse. Montage. You can, you can keep, I'm going to turn the sound down so you can talk. talk. Keep talking. So I'm just having him um, touch the arrows. And I use clicker training, so which is really helps speed it along. Um, and I wave the arrows around. I tap the arrows on him. And I wave them above his head. Because obviously when we're shooting, we're up here somewhere. And it, it took him about eight months a very steady work to get him completely comfortable. It took Bucky about eight minutes, because he doesn't care. Um, so you can see here, I'm just like rattling him around. I'm doing little tiny ping, ping, ping. So he gets used to the shooting. I'm bashing him in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see he's not even being held there. Now she's waiting. I am not her. using a quiver correctly right there. <laughs> I, was, I was just being dumb. So but I, I'm riding Larry here behind her while she shoots on Bucky. So it gives Larry an idea of the noise and everything else. And this is actually first shots off of Larry, I mm -hmm. think, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. When you first shot. So I'm using a flu flu and a blunt, which is a much slower arrow. And I can show you a picture of one of oh, those. Oh, I can move this. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. I'm a dope. <laughs> and uh, Larry did beautifully here. Yeah. So I, the first few shots were really tiny little ones. And then I slowly get into a bigger, bigger shot. The first shots I did with the snake bow, because I don't care if I drop it. And they're these shots I'm doing with my bow. No, no, Danielle. I'm not like fully drawing back. I'm still like being cautious. So, so what I think you're showing us here is that just the way you have to break each step down for a person, you have to break each step down for a horse and make sure that the horse is really okay. Yes. Because you're not, you don't have your hands. <laughs> yeah when once you're on there so you, there's a lot of trust involved yeah and you really want your horse to not care that you're doing lots of daft stuff on his back and you can see it larry has now got into walking and shooting and that's kind of where we're at at the moment with him we walk and shoot and as he gets more comfortable we'll start trotting and shooting and then cantering and shooting but and it's how long have you been working with larry on this uh, it took about eight months with Larry. He was a long, slow process because he had so many fear issues when he came to us. Right. Um, and then Bucky has never had a fear issue in his life. But like I said, it literally was minutes with Bucky and eight months with Larry. So and so horse any could horse could be anywhere in between those two numbers. Yes. Yeah. Or longer. And that's yeah. the thing. I think it's so important for people to realize that, it, you know, I, I always talk about you have to teach them all the letters of the alphabet. And if you skip some yes. letters, you can't spell certain words, right? So exactly. if, yeah. you know, if I, if I give you an A, a T, an L, and a K, you still can't spell walk. No. <laughs> <laughs> you probably could. But, um. <laughs> but you get the meaning. And, and that's the thing. It's so important to break the process down and make sure the horse is secure in all yes. the steps. And yes. that's actually, you could use sure foot pads in there to help the horses relax. We actually too. have done that with Larry. We use sure foot pads with Larry and it really helps him yeah. relax and um, feel his own self. If that makes, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, every time, it, like at the beginning of the track, he goes on and then like, and then I end the track and come back and then he goes back to the pad. So yep. that's the easiest practice. So, so someone's asking if this sport has a high incidence of injury. Um, yes, I mean, injury, injury wise, like if you dry fire, it could be very bad. Right. Um, but the main injuries are small injuries where you hit the string, and it's called a bite, where you hit the string on your arm and you get a big bruise. That's the most common. And even though it's actually a, a sign of poor form, whenever we do get bit, we always very proudly show it to each other. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, and I <laughs> would say, proudly. I mean, we, we, when it, yes, if I were to try to canter and shoot off of Larry now, She'd I would get it. hurt <laughs> because he's not ready. So, you, yeah. you know, you have to be so you can just fall sensible. Off. Yeah. So we have, I mean, when the, we're doing mounted archery, you have all the things that can happen just because you're on a horse, plus all the things that can go wrong yeah. with a bow and arrow. 
So it, it, yeah. it's yeah. a. You kind of have to be ready to ditch your stuff. Well, it just means that, you know, while it can be a really fun and very exciting and very demanding um, mentally and physically, it also, ha you have to take the responsibility to make sure to learn and be patient so that you are setting yourself up for success. Yes, yes. And, you know, and I think that that's the, like, you guys have so much fun doing this and you're constantly laughing and, and everything. But I think that behind all that is the serious side of knowing that you have to break down the skills, which is what you showed us with Larry, and knowing that you have to break down the skills of the student. And yes, you want to have fun, but I think you adhere to my rule that I've always used when I teach, which is safe, fun, and educational. And, yes, exactly. And it, right. And that, that um, yeah. because if somebody and just watched this video, they might think that all you guys do is just play around and giddy and ha ha through it. But no, I think there's a lot of technique that you guys spend a lot of time practicing. So in any given week, how many hours do you spend practicing archery? It depends on the time of year. In the summer, hardly any, because I have to work all summer. Um, and in the winter, when I'm fully in practice, I will mostly practice most days. So even if it's down to being, if it's a horrible rainy day and I'm inside my house, I will practice speed right knocking in the house. Um, and because you can do that without shooting an arrow. So you literally, you'll speed knock and then just push the arrow off, speed knock, push the arrow off. And then in the depths of the winter, my husband is a wonderful man. So I actually set up an archery range in my house um, from <laughs> one room to the other. <laughs> And I come over. And she comes over. And do so you put up warning signs? Do not cross this path? We, the we lock all the doors. We lock all the doors. <laughs> we shut the dogs out and the cat. And I have archery targets. I mean, literally, I stand where we are sitting right now next to the couch. And I shoot through a doorway into the other room where I've set up a target. And, um, and I'll do that all winter. When it's and let's hope you horrible. don't stray a little and your walls would be... Um, yeah, I've I not. Yet, I shot the carpet once, <laughs> but eh, you know, my hubby doesn't mind. I'm not going to wood. Yeah, nothing. So how wood. far uh, do these you, arrows go? Like, how? What's the distance that you need? When you're shooting, um, like, generally, when you're shooting a competition track, it's a 90 meter track, and the targets are seven meters or nine meters, depending on the competition, away from the track. But you're shooting from the very start, so the, the furthest you'd be shooting is 45 meters. So as soon as you hit the track and start galloping, you start shooting. So the longest distance would be 45 meters, and then the shortest distance would be seven meters. And she, of course, because she's amazing, she has set up a whole bunch of pictures um, oh, yeah. of all the different types oh, of Oh, great. And when you're, teach, when you're doing um, ground archery, what's the distance to the target then? Uh, some, some competitions, um, so there's actually quite a lot of ground competitions that you can do as well. And um, it can be anything from seven meters, 18 meters is quite popular, up to 45 meters. Wow. Is, yeah, mm -hmm. that's hard. Yeah. And Sheila Rayanne, who's the artist I was telling you about, she is out of our whole group. She is the best at distance shots. Mm -hmm. She's amazingly good at it. Sheila. I'm not that good at the distance shots, but I'm quite good at the short shots. No, I'm not. I'm okay. Um, so next, I think we're talking about um, shooting off, shooting off the horse. Shooting off the horse. Shooting off the horse. Oh, you guys are gonna love this. I can't wait to hear you both talk about balancing and the saddle. <laughs> yes. Here it goes. So good. Let's listen to the pros. <laughs> okay. All right. So we have what I said. Shooting off of the horse. So um, you can see there's a picture of me and Danielle being daft. And I'm actually <laughs> about to push her off of Larry. Um, and then there's a picture above, which is me at a demo shooting. And I'm jumping and shooting a gong, a cymbal, with a blunt arrow, which is, um, this is a, called a flu flu. So it's a very slow arrow and it's got a blunt tip instead of a sharp tip. So we use these, if you're, if you're shooting a Quebec competition or if you're shooting gongs or cymbals, this is what you would use. And it's much safer. It doesn't go very far or very fast. So they're important. And then at the bottom, you can see me high. And I think he's on an Icelandic. I'm not sure what he's yeah, on. Yeah, it looks like but it. 
going hell for leather down a 90 meter track. And he just broke a world record. Yeah, we'll watch more videos of him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to talk about oh, these so, things that you gave me? Yeah, about? carrying equipment on the horse. We've shown you all the quivers. So you can have a quiver on your thigh. You can have one on your back. You can have it across your lower back. You can have it like a sword quiver. Um, there's as many different types of quivers. And then there's even this, the basic ground quiver, which is a tube. But when you're on a horse, you want your arrows to be secure so they don't rattle around and just fly out everywhere. Um, when you're learning to shoot from the saddle, uh, it's different from the ground sequence, uh, but not a huge amount different. So you still got to have the perfect form. When you're carrying the arrows, often you'll have a whole bunch of arrows in your hand with your bow and often one knocked because you some competitions you can start knocked, some you can't. Um, so if you're carrying a locked bow, you've either got to carry it up or pointing straight down. Um, and, you know, there's competitions for walk, there's competitions for trot and canter, gallop. There's arena competitions. There's, um, there's hunt track, which is like literally a cross country course mm, with yeah. targets and jumps and water. We'll go over those. And yeah. that's my favorite. Um, and then the big thing with the horse really is the balance while you're shooting because you're galloping and, um, and shooting and turning in the saddle. And for a little while, I was having some issues with that. And actually one of the pictures that I'm showing, I think it's a departing shot, I've got my hip hop uh, hooked, which is embarrassing because you taught me not to do that. Oh, okay, <laughs> well. <laughs> well, we'll, do, we'll get to it and yeah. she'll point out. Um, so with the balance, you really gotta stay centered, you gotta stay balanced. So even though you're going as fast as you can on your horse, and you can do the fast horses or do 90 meters in seven seconds. Um, on Bucky, who's not a fast horse, he does it in about 12 seconds. Um, so, and the cutoff I think is 14 seconds. After that, you start to get penalty points. Um, and so you are shooting, you know, as you're galloping, you're shooting in front of you and then to the side of you and then behind you, the Parthian shot, um, as you're galloping. So you have to be able to move around in the saddle and stay balanced. And also your horse has to learn to um, ignore you. So right. Because he's got to run straight and not go with your body. Not stop. Yeah. So when I'm riding Bucky um, in the arena and then and if I move my body, I want him to react to my body and listen and move as I ask him. With the archery, I want him to go in a dead straight line as fast as he can while I do all sorts of shenanigans up top and he just ignores me and runs in a straight line. So you do have to teach them to do that. So I think um, what I haven't been able to master is how you um, are in a half, half, excuse me, half seat. It could be called half, half seat. Um, or light seat. It's, I actually call it, um, yeah, two point, two light point, seat. Yeah. Um, two point, light seat, jumping position are all this. Not really traditional. Yeah. Yeah, light seat's yeah. a little but it's closer not to the really tack. exactly the same as that because you're more standing straight up. But not it's braced against your stirrups. No. Um, what you normally do is you actually rest the front of your thighs or the side, inside of your thighs against the saddle. And um, there's a guy who I cannot pronounce his name, but we call him the floating pole. I don't know if you can see that. Is it, oh, it's backwards. Is it backwards? Well, well we're going to see his name in a second. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna show. Yeah, so, it's weird how things show up on on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, on Zoom. Sometimes uh, they're when I look on Facebook, we're on the opposite sides of the screen. Oh, cool. So, so this is Danielle, and she's posting. So you yeah, so post. you can post. Like, so I actually shot um, pretty darn good this competition, and I was posting. And um, Bucky knows see, his job. Yeah. And he's um, also posting. Also posting. Yeah. And Bucky's doing a fantastic job. He's staying steady. And you, and if you get, if the horse stops in the middle, you are the squad. Um, next we have we're gonna watch Annie do some cantering. So, sorry. So I'm actually above the saddle now. I'm not so why I'm nothing in it now. Who's he gonna do a jump? <laughs> Climb. <laughs> so people will do this in any type of saddle. They have western saddles and then they stay in the seat. This is Mihai. He's flying. You can see how he can like... Yeah, the video is slow, so it doesn't appear that he's flying. It's a little bit broken up. Okay, this is slow-mo. And you really, in this one, you can just see his form is just 
amazing. And he's such a great teacher. You can actually just contact him and ask him questions. And even though he is the top competitor in the world, he will happily answer your questions. As I found out, because I asked him loads. <laughs> Here he is again. Here he is again, this steaming is down the track. Yeah, Hello. there we can see the speed when he started. Yeah. Well, and he yeah. actually also um, uses his voice and his lungs to help with the shoot, because the breathing is part of the shooting sequence, it's a martial which art. we haven't gotten into, but. That's really advanced. Yeah. And then here's. This is the man, Wojciech Wojciech. But if you watch him. He's floating. So his lower body is moving, and then his upper body is as still as can be. He's and he's just showing that now. He's not shooting, he's actually doing this as a demo. But you can really see how he just, we call him the floating pole, because he just floats. He's yeah, that's pretty amazing. Pretty cool video from that yeah. perspective. That was really neat. And then this is me doing it at a standstill. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the forward shot. So if you were going down the track, your first target will be 45 meters away from you, ahead of you. And so you'll be trying to get off as many shots as you can um, to that forward shot. So you'll be shooting in front of you, not directly over the horse's head, but it's sort of over the side of his ear. And Bucky's just standing there being bored. <laughs> um, and this is a side shot from behind. And so that will be at seven to nine meters, literally just a side shot. And um, then departing shot. Departing. And you can see on that bottom one, I've got my hip hooked out. So if anything happened, I'd just fall off. So I'm not centered in the saddle there. So don't look at that picture. Well, you're, you wouldn't fall off because your left leg would actually take the brace and it would hook on the horse's wither, so. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's okay, you know, I mean, and that's why you're, you have the two sides, which is a really good thing. Now, why would you be shooting into the air? So the Quebec is basically, it's um, a symbol on a flagpole. And so you will gallop past and you will shoot, so as you're galloping, you will shoot above you. And for this, you have to use, I'm actually using a normal arrow there just to demonstrate, but you actually have to have a flu flu and a blunt and you will be a disqualified if you don't use a blunt because you're yeah. shooting up in the air and it's gonna come back down again. Um, so you gallop past and you literally will shoot straight above you and you have to hit the gong. And there's wow. two different styles here. The one where she's really low is an old style and then the one where she's upright is the more uh, newer, style. newer style. Yoga is very, very useful you look when great. it comes to doing uh, mounted art. Yeah, really. Feldenkrais would be helpful too. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, yes. This is a ground shot. So sometimes, especially on the hunt track, you will be shooting targets as you gallop past them or almost directly underneath your horse. Uh, and so you'll do a ground shot. And this is the Jamaki, which I'm not sure if that's how Jer you pronounce. Jermaki. Jamaki. 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 Um, Jamaki. Um, I'm doing a very bad impression of the Jamaki because uh, I can't really get my arms like that. But let's watch someone. Oh, watch this, the, is the this is the Kobach. Traditionally, they shot at gourds. I thought that was pretty cool. Just oh, wow. Squash. Um, and then here's uh, Mike Lodes, uh, who's got a great book. I'll show you later on. on, um, on He's got Kobach. a really free shoulder blade. Yep. Not mine isn't. I'm, I, I, <laughs> honestly, my shoulder just dislocates looking at this. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, no, it's all the shoulder blade has to slide. Yeah you know, down and, and up at the same, in the opposite side, yes. So he's doing that at a hard gallop. I was doing it at a standstill and um, it look, took me a while to get there. <laughs> cool shot. I, oh my God, we're in here. Go. Oh, no. Come on, come to the dogs. Go. Right. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Still me. Um, so the demos, the demos are just fun. So we did the Vermont Renaissance or Renaissance Fair last year. And um, it was the first one we've ever done. And we were so lucky that the, the jousty people really helped us. They let us use some of their stuff that we didn't have. The fun. woman we were gonna do it with, at, uh, Marcy, uh, broke her arm the night before. Oh, and so she had all the stuff that we needed and everything. And so we ended up just going, the two of us, and with no idea what we were gonna do. Well, we don't just she came up a pl with a plan about 10 minutes before we started to do the demo and we had the best time. Yeah, that's it the important part. Just to always just have fun in safety. And safety. 
and yeah, fun. safe, fun, and educational, right? Those three. Yes, yes. Exactly. Yes. And um, so here we're actually shooting a competition, the one where there's lots of people lined up. We're shooting um, a British Horse Archery Association ground competition. We're at 18 meters, and, uh, which is a really fun competition to do. And then the other one, I'm at a demo yelling and screaming because I just jumped a fence and hit a target and I'm happy about it. Um, <laughs> and there's a bunch of different courses. There's so many. So there is, it used to be the Korean and um, the Hungarian. And now they've changed that to um, the Tower and the Raid um, because. I'm not sure why, but they, 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 there is a lot of complicated backstory. But anyway, so now they've changed it to the raid, to the tower, and they have different styles of targets. Um, with the tower, they're up six feet high on a tower, and you have to shoot high. Um, and then there's the Quebec that we just showed you. There's, there's arena courses now that you can shoot in an arena. And the hunt track, which is the one where you're cross, doing cross country, which is just fab, 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 fab. And then the postals. Now, the great thing about the horse archery world is that they're really inclusive and really friendly and helpful. So like I said, you can contact me, hi, and he's just really nice. You can contact Wojciech, and I did, I asked him about using his videos. He was super nice. In fact, invited me to Poland to learn from him, which I would love to do. Um, and the International Horse Archery Alliance actually holds postals. So they have several different competitions, a walk, a trot, a canter, and a ground that you, um, they set the course up and then you recreate the course at home and you shoot the competition and then you send in your results. And so it's, it becomes this international thing. So there's people Fun. from all these different countries shooting the competitions together. Um, and it's really good fun. So last year we did a lot of postals and um, the walk and the trot are on a shorter course and then the canter gallop ones are on the 90 meters, which we don't have access to a 90 meter field. So we can't do the canter yet. Um, but last year, 219, I got grand champion in the, That's right. in the walk. And then I got reserve champion in the trot. And I only did one canter competition uh, where I came 33rd out of 200 and something people. Wow. Very cool. <laughs> so when I can get a course together on the 90 meters, I will start doing the canter courses, but I'm still hoping for the course. It's hard to find a piece of land here that's big enough to mm. shoot it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then. Is that like a polo field length? Of... What was that? Is that like a, po is 90 meters means nothing to me. So is it like a polo field? It's about three feet to a meter. Yeah, but it, I, I don't do distances. So is it like a football yeah, field, a polo uh, field? Uh, it, it's about the length of the big field at Misty, down at the back. Oh, <laughs> Does that okay. Help? There we go. <laughs> and it will yeah. help no one else on this I don't know how long <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how long a football field it is. Oh, got it. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I can't, it's quite long. So that the, um, the arena at Misty is 60 meters long. Oh, so you so need another 30. You need yeah, a... And then you have your run in and run out. So you have to have yep. 15 meters run in, 90 meter course, and 15 meters run out. Got it. So, so quite a distance. Yeah, I almost need twice a Misty indoor. Yeah. yeah. And the postals are great. So even some of my students have um, only done two or three lessons, and then they can go into a ground postal or a walk postal and compete and have fun. And you know, awesome. it's just for fun so yeah and i think like we just have some funny pictures of us at demos and um and then i it looks like i actually didn't put all the names out on the slide so i'll give them to you to put in the link yeah what like, what you can do is send them to me i can even post them later in the, in the uh, dis description of um of yeah the, oh, yeah. yeah so this is us at the demos Wait, well, I didn't have, we didn't have a horse. So we just had Bucky. And so I was like, I got an idea. And uh, I just like that picture of us running into the sunset. I together. know, we had it together on our horses. And then <laughs> Tony, fantastic thing where she call, I couldn't get the video, but um, she'll call Tony, he'll come right up in between her legs and then she'll, she won't put her weight down. 
on him. To you have to tell him Tony's the phony. So Tony Smalls is a miniature horse. Here he is. And so what we have him do is I have him stand at the end of the track. I run to the first target. I call him. He runs between my legs and I shoot the target. Then I get off him and I go run to the next target. And uh, we do the same thing again. And then on the third target, he runs to me and then he lies down. So he lays down a command. He lays down and then I duck down behind him and I shoot using him as a, um, a shield, like the horses they used to do back in the wars. They would use their horse as a shield. Um, so we do that, but we always say, but you know, back in the day, they used a bigger horse. <laughs> And, you need uh, roller uh, skates. Uh, if you had roller skates like that, yeah, the video, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. Selwell, the Selwell. Yeah. 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 So Tony is he's the um, had the grand finale of the yeah. um, archery demos, and uh, he loves it. He has the best time, and then he gets to gallop around and just be daft and stuff like that, and then do a meet and greet. And the new mini we just got is going to be doing the same thing. <laughs> Once we taught her. She's even shorter. Yeah, she's even shorter. Which she oh needs. wow, because yeah. I'm a because she's short. Because <laughs> she's a hobbit. <laughs> okay. Um, these are the people who we talked about the most: Mihai and Wojcik. 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 Um, uh, Mihai is a uh, his his a uh, grouper company. He's living arrow living horseback. Arrow horseback archery mm -hmm. on YouTube yeah. or yeah. Facebook. This is how to spell these. But we're, let's give you the links. Yeah. Wait, well, yeah, I can put them up in the descriptions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think last but not least, we're just gonna watch this fantastic little, just Annie having fun, having fun. At, oh, it's at the, there it goes. It's funny outfit. Is it moving? Slowly. Yeah, sometimes the video just doesn't play well. That's too bad. But we get the idea. This yeah. video somewhere we can probably post the link to that too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't, I didn't take into account web speed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, and yeah. uh, so, so what if someone? Oh my goodness! <laughs> so this is my armor that I had made, handmade by Trish Wild, and um, this was for all this year's demos. Oh it is wow! A piece of armor that is actually very flexible and you can shoot in it. And I didn't get to use it. And it's even got our logo on the back. <sighs> wow. Uh, I didn't get to use it this year because of COVID, but next year, you Look will out, see world. me in this thing. <laughs> 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 and having the outfits is fun. I didn't think it would be as much fun yeah, as it is, fun. but wearing the outfits and shooting and screaming and yelling and eating ice cream is just so much fun. Yeah. So, so if someone's watching this video and they want to find a, a club or a group in their area, what can they do? Where they do they go? Go to the Mounted Archery Association of the Americas, MA3. Hey, well, that, they're not, I'm not sharing. Hold on. Oh, one second. Got it. Oh, go. Mounted Archery Association of the Americas. Mounted Archery Association of the Americas. And you can find a chapter close to you, and you can see they're all over the place. Right. Um, and uh, there's also Horse Archery USA. Mm -hmm. If you're in England, um, then there's the British Horse Archery Association, and they're the ones who wrote the superb Bible. The other way around. Oh, okay. I was just showing the logo. Okay, it's probably sorry. backwards, but yeah. this no, but is a fantastic can, book. I highly, highly recommend it. Is it? Oh, great. We'll, okay. we'll link these. This book these, tells you everything you need to know. Everything. It's amazing. Horsemanship to everything. shooting styles to competitions to a... All right. So you guys have an assignment. Write me a blurb with all the links in it and then send it to me in an email. I'll just grab it. I'll put it in the description of the, of the webinar so that, but I'll, I yeah. need it by tonight so I can upload it with the webinar. Okay. okay. Awesome. We can well, this has been a blast. I mean, I, I'm, I'm actually, um, I may be out to the <laughs> vineyard and uh, I think we can do this with social distancing, right? Easy, right? You wear a mask, you know? Yeah. I've been uh, doing, I've been teaching still through COVID and literally I have, you know, we stay six feet apart and I show them what to do and you can shoot. And yeah. we're going to start classes up at Misty again fairly soon. They're just working on it at the moment. 
Oh, that's great. And that's Misty again. Meadows Equine Learning Center on Martha's Vineyard, which is a fabulous nonprofit. And if you wanted to make a donation to them to keep that archery program going, you can find them on they, you can find them on the web. You can find them on Facebook, Misty Meadows Equine Learning Center. Um, so, well, thank yeah, you guys for doing this. People have absolutely loved this webinar. They think it's been a blast and really interesting and informative. Um, I thought it was really great because... I, but you waffled a lot, but that's okay. That's what you guys do. <laughs> we are good at waffling. We have the time. We, we, long we long love waffle. it so much that we even tattooed it upon oh, our Oh, dear. We're we the same socks. socks. I just noticed that. <laughs> you my best friend. We still alive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we didn't realize that. We thought it was Yeah, no, socks. I have not turned it off yet. No, we're still alive. <laughs> All right, so just remember that you can find this and all the other webinars on the Surefoot Equine YouTube channel. If you subscribe, you'll get a notice every time we put up another webinar. Tomorrow, my guest is Linda Tellington-Jones for my 100th webinar. Yeah. I have known Linda since 1985, and she changed my life um, and many other people's lives. So I'm really excited to have her as my guest. That'll be at 3 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. So please tune into that. And thank you both, Danielle and Annie, for doing this. This was a blast. <laughs> Yay. And um, I think when I get out there to, to uh, Martha's Vineyard, I'll be looking you up for some lessons. Hey. We'll teach you. Awesome. Great. Well, <laughs> thanks again. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Bye. <laughs>